Hi guys, Raul from Simple Wi-Fi and in this video we're going to be covering sectorial panel antennas. Alright, so let's start with the basics. First off, a sectorial antenna is a directional antenna. You have to point this in a direction where you want to receive a signal from or transmit a signal to. Most often you see these on cell towers. Uh, this kind of design of antenna is used mostly for really big spreads. And what I mean by that is a radiation pattern can go anywhere from 45 degrees up to 180 degrees, depending on the size and the gain of the antenna. Now, these are really great for base stations. We typically don't recommend them to, with a USB adapter for receiving because you know where the signal is coming from. So you want to just use something a little bit more focal, like one of our smaller panels. 14 dBi, 32 degrees. A sectorial antenna is gonna be receiving up to 120, 45, 90, all those numbers I said before. And you're gonna be wasting a lot of energy left and right when you already know where the signal's coming from. So that's why it's better to use this as a base station to transmit signal out to cover more area. And you'll see these a lot now in farms, uh, marinas, uh, stadiums, this kind of thing for spreading Wi-Fi over a large area is a fant fantastic use case. Okay, so now that we've established that a sectorial panel antenna is a fantastic base station antenna, we're gonna talk about how to choose the right one for you. And basically that comes down to two different things the radiation pattern and the gain. So you'll typically see these explained as X dBi, X being a number, uh, typically from 10, 12, 15, 18, and 19, and, and then followed by a, a radiation pattern. So 45, 90, 120, 180 degrees, okay? So this will be the forward reaching potential in, measured in dBi, so the higher the DBI is, the further the antenna can reach. And then the radiation pattern will tell you how far left and right this antenna can transmit. So when you're looking at this, you need to also factor in the size. If you can mount this antenna at your house or your apartment or your marina or your farm or whatever it is that you're trying to cover with Wi-Fi. So for example, our 18 dBi, 120 degree spread antenna is fairly big. Uh, it's, it's fantastic antenna, huge potential forward. 18 dBi is a very high, far reaching antenna with a really nice spread of 120 degrees. These for sure you see often as uh, cell tower base station. So you can set up three, one, two, and three, and now you've got 360 coverage. So it's a very far reaching omnidirectional solution compared to a 15 dBi Omni, which, we're, which we also sell on our site, very popular, but it doesn't reach as far. This is gonna reach twice, even sometimes three times as far as our omnidirectional, but you have to compensate for the size of this. This is also a 2.4 gigahertz frequency antenna, and the 2.4 antennas are typically gonna be larger because it's a larger wavelength compared to the five gigahertz. Uh, for example, this one over here is a, 5 gigahertz, 16 dBi antenna. Just 2 dBi less than this big guy, but that's on a different and, and shorter frequency. So the antenna can be shorter. It doesn't have to be so big to compensate for that. This one right here is a 90 degrees, 16 dBi, 2.4. So you have, to, you have to also think about this radiation pattern is only 90 degrees. So it doesn't have to be as big as this. 2 dBi less, but 90 degrees, 120. So the more spread, the more gain you want, the larger the antenna. And you have to think about these, these factors when you're deciding what is the right installation for you. All right, so now that we understand how these antennas work and you're able to decide for yourself how much gain or radiation pattern you might need, we're gonna walk through a couple of DIY scenarios where you can use an off-the-shelf router like the Netgear Nighthawk that has three antenna ports with detachable antennas coax cable and the sectorials to create your own really far-reaching hotspots. So to create the best far-reaching hotspot that you can, you're gonna need a couple things. First, line of sight. So you wanna to try to mount the antenna as high as possible with the clearest line of sight between where you want to place the antenna and reach. So if you're in an RV park, if you're a marina, if you're a back, you got a big backyard, you wanna mount the antenna in the ideal location so that you have a visible line of sight. Next, you're gonna want a router that's with detachable antennas 
So when you open the box, you can uh, physically unscrew the antennas that come with it, and then you can connect coax cable to it. So that's how you can put these big boys onto a Netgear Nighthawk, for example. We really like that router because it manages users very well, it maintains high speed, and it has three ports, so you can create a 360 base station. All right, next let's cover cable. So the thickest cable possible is always gonna be the best option. When you're running long lengths of, uh, of coax cable, the signal can be lossy, meaning you actually lose signal and signal strength uh, as the cable runs through from the antenna to the router and vice versa. So you wanna use the thickest cable possible. That means that it has a, the, the thickest insulating jacket that insulates that RF, that radio frequency, down the path of the cable. So anything over 20 feet, I strongly recommend going with our 400 type. You can sometimes get away with it with uh, 10 foot runs and five foot runs. You should, you, it's not really a problem to go with a 240 or a 195. And I'm talking about, when I say these numbers, this is a cable model number, but also pertains to the thickness. So 195 is 0.195 of the cable diameter and uh, 400 is a fourth of an inch. So it's a little bit thicker. It has more insulating jacket, for example. Next, you want the right connectors. On the antenna side, the cable should have an end male, which goes on to the end female, which is already on the antenna. And for your router, the, the Wi-Fi world uses SMA RP. So you're gonna have an SMA type, reverse polarity, which is the pin is inverted. But really all you need to know for this scenario is that the Netgear routers, they use SMA RP. So on the cable, you want SMA RP male, okay? And then end male on the antenna side. As long as you're good on the connectors, get the thickest cable possible, you're gonna maintain the best signal quality between the antenna and your router. Okay, so let's talk about scenarios. Uh, let's start with the first one. The easiest one would be is if you have a backyard or you've got a straight shot of a, your farm or your barn or your marina and basically anything just in one direction. You can get away with using a 90 degree or a 120 degree antenna is going to be mounted on a pole, a J-pole, uh, a tripod, uh, anything that's going to safely secure this antenna from swinging around in bad weather and keep it focused in a direction where you want coverage. So you got to play around with, okay, if I'm standing at the edge of my backyard and I can kind of see this way, okay, this is about 90 degrees, it's going to cover it no problem, maybe 120 if I want to go a little bit further, or 180, right? You need to decide where you want to get coverage and then look at the radiation pattern and see, okay, I can get by with just a smaller antenna because I only need maybe 45 degrees because my home is gonna cover the near area and then that 45 will get me out to the far, further part of my backyard or to the furthest part of my land or whatever it is you're trying to cover. So the easiest is always gonna be with one antenna, you point and you're good to go. And in that case, you can even use the other two ports on your router to keep transmitting inside your house. And one antenna will be pointing down your backyard or where your marina, whatever it is. All right, so scenario number two just adds to scenario number one, where you're mounting two antennas using two ports on the router. One stays for the indoor omnidirectional radiation, but the other two are then gonna be pointing in different directions. So if you wanna cover more area, or you, let's say you wanna use a 45 degree one on the corner of this house, you can run cable then to that side and then cable to the other side of the house and cover 45 in that direction. So you get a nice spread of 90 and 90 or whatever it is you're trying to do. So you can move the antennas to where you want to shoot coverage and it doesn't necessarily, they don't have to necessarily be mounted like this next to each other. They could be in different antenna locations and you can run coax back to your router. All right, so scenario number three has two parts. Uh, basically, you wanna create a 360 coverage, very far reaching, but you don't have a nice uh, single mounting location to make a tripod like this. Then you can run, like we did in scenario number two, different cable paths to different antenna mounting locations, and then you can decide which radiation pattern is right for each location. So don't, even, you know, don't worry too much, even if you have to overlap, Sometimes two antennas pointing in a general similar location can overlap and that actually improves uh, your spread, of course, and then better, better bandwidth for those 
uh, difficult areas. But you can run cable to three different locations, all coming back to the main source, and you create a 360. So uh, you can put one on the front of your house, one off to the side, one to the other side, and then you got 360, for example. Now, the other, the, the best case solution, or the best, the other part of scenario three, is going to be a single mounting location where you can use three 120s, 120, 120, and 120, and now you've got 360 degree coverage very far reaching, one antenna location, so you only have to worry about one place to mount this, one tie down, and so on. So we hope you now better understand how sectorial Wi-Fi antennas work and how they can be best used for your application. If you liked the video, please press like, and you can also subscribe to our channel for more Wi-Fi tutorials. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can hit us up at support at simplewifi.com. Thanks.